Hello all my stitching friends. This is Suki, the brown eyed stitcher, and this is floss tube number 16. And yes, 16. My last video was my chart parade, like my full coverage, um, unstarted pattern showcase. Yeah, chart parade, right? Full coverage chart parade. <laughs> you guys know what I mean when I'm saying that. So if you haven't seen that yet and you want to, go back one video, it's floss tube extra. But here we are today for an update on my projects. I feel like I've not done a lot of stitching which is kind of true and kind of not true. It's all perspective, right? So we've talked before about how stitching is like my therapy. Um, it's like, that's, I'm not even kidding about that. Like stitching is my therapy, but the last two weeks I've been um, very busy with I guess it's been three weeks now. The last three weeks I've been busy with something that I will probably talk about in my next video, but not yet. Um, I've been busy with something that's taken up a lot of my time and energy, and especially energy. <laughs> and so it's, it's meant less time for stitching. So that's a good thing and a bad thing. Maybe not a bad thing. I, it's just a challenging thing because I'm, I'm used to using my stitching as ways to like soothe overstimulation or like a hyperactive nervous system. And, and I have needed a significant amount of time in, in doing that. So I've, I've put a lot of my time towards stitching over the last year. So these last three weeks when I've not been able to put as much time into stitching, I've needed more stitching. I, like I've needed that stitching because I've purposely been expending my energy and, and doing this thing that causes a lot of like mental and emotional fatigue that translates for me into a physical fatigue. Um, not as, yes, easily, but not as easily as it was a couple years ago. So that's a good thing. That means progress has been made. Um, anyway, it's just kind of this weird place where I need the stitching to like help recenter myself to calm down the overstimulation. Um, but I have less time in which to do that in. I don't, I don't know, but I have been, I've, I've still stitched a lot and I still have a lot of things to show you. So, um, that's, I just keep to my rotation and, and then if I end up, having to skip a day on my secondary project, like sometimes that's happened. That's okay. I just keep moving right along. It'll come back around. It'll eventually get done. And I I'm just, I'm just doing the best I can. So first I have a finish. I'm pretty certain. Yes, this finish happened after my last video. <laughs> It, I finished this on July 17th. I started on May 27th. And it is April. April, um, this is Calendar Girl series by Little House Needleworks. I am like forgetting all the information here. This is 28 count linen in country French latte. So April will be the fourth month I have completely finished. All the rest of them are started um, from my 
Stitch Mania this year, but April's done now. And I love it. She's so pretty. They're all pretty. I love them all. I just, I love how that it's just, they all have this similar structure with, you know, the month and the, the vine and then the girl and a very similar color palette, but there's, they're all still unique. They're all holding something different. They all have different colors. Uh, the elements aren't, aren't all the same, which you're going to see in my, uh, the one that replaced it, May, in May, which I'm going to show you right now. I'm working on May. This is my, um, like, I guess travel piece, like when I'm going somewhere and like sitting in a meeting and I need to like listen, or maybe if I'm watching a movie, I don't always do this when I watch a movie. Um, it, it kind of depends on how tired I am, honestly. Anyway, she's here right now. One thing that's very unique about this one that's not in the other ones is that this vine has extra little branches coming off of it. None of the other vines have that, but this one does. So I still have, I think, three more leaves down in here to go. There's flowers in there. The leaves aren't even finished. Um, just, just one color of the leaf is. We've got the girl. Her dress is mostly this cream color, which is interesting. We'll, we'll see how that, because it's, it's very similar to the fabric, but it still shows up. So we'll see how that turns out. But that's where she is right now, Miss May. She mostly gets work on Mondays. No, not Mondays. I don't know why I said Mondays. Sundays, and sometimes on Fridays. Maybe some other times too, but it's predominantly Sundays, sometimes, sometimes Fridays. I can't... Words. Um, words are present, obviously. Um... And that's good. that'll change in, in a couple months. In September, our dance schedule starts up again, and so then I will uh, I'll have a significant amount of time to stitch, possibly read, but most likely stitch. Um, we'll see. And I'll have I'll have a lot of time then to take something. So those will start getting a lot of work come September. Alrighty, on to my big projects. This is Bubble Bubble Chocolate Trouble by Randall Spangler. And this is quite a large one. It's 575 by 658. So it's huge and um, it's big. It's big, but we didn't think about that when we chose to do it. Uh, which I'm okay with. But my daughter loves Randall Spangler and wants a lot of them. And if most of them end up becoming like minis instead of the regular size, then we're going to have like one really, really, really big one. Like this is going to feel big compared to all the other ones. Anyway, uh, this is 25 count, easy count. It is um, two over one tenth stitch. And I worked in blues along here. This is the piece I work on on the 12th of every month. So, I got in 627 stitches, all up in here. 
it's at 3.25%. Halfway is somewhere here-ish, I think. So, I have a lot of blue in this piece to do before I really get anywhere else. And that's okay. I really like working on this piece. It feels like it stitches up fast because it's so few. It's just that it only is getting one day a month right now. You, you only get to make so much project progress when it's only one day. This beauty, however, is Queen of the Night by Josephine Wall. Um, charted by Heaven and Earth Design. She's a little one. Well, she feels like a little one. Let's see here. Uh, I did it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is also 25 count. Easy count. There we go. Uh, two over one tenth stitch. I just realized I didn't put my microphone on, and so my daughter's gonna harass me about that. Um, what it, what was I saying here? I put in two thousand two hundred and twenty four stitches, so we are at twenty point ninety three percent now. We got over the 20%. It's so pretty. I really, really, I really, really love, well, every section I work on I really love, but I love the flow of up here and how all those different blues are playing with each other. I love it. This one will come out uh, this upcoming weekend, so I don't, I don't know if I'll have time to get all the way to the edge. Like I said, my stitching time has been more limited. Weekends, I tend to have more time, though, so I may be able to. I'm hoping to get to the end of this row, but we'll see. I have a feeling... I have a feeling it won't, but it just might. I don't know. I can get really motivated by things like that, by saying I want to reach the end of the row, so I might forego something like an hour of sleep <laughs> if I'm super close to meeting something like that. I can't be the only one who does that. That's Queen of the Night. She gets Friday, Saturday, and Sunday every other week. So within a month, it's a minimum of six days, depending on how your weekends fall within a month. Um, so yeah, she gets three weeks or th three days every other week. And as of right now, that pace does not actually meet my goal. Um, it, do, it doesn't meet my goal of when I want this piece finished. But it's what I can give it right now. But I have a plan, hopefully, I hopefully have a plan in which I will be able to give this more time. And if I remember, I'll explain that later in this video. I'll try to remember. Next up, uh, Sabrina, uh, Amirabilia. My first Mirabilia. I am stitching her on 28 count linen by Picture This Plus in Sprite. I am stitching her without the beads. I'm 
I'm using the DMC equivalent of the bead colors and adding in a blending filament instead. But right now, really what I'm working on is a lot of one over one skin. <laughs> so much skin when you stitch one over one. So, this is the bottom of her skin down here. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think to here is all the bottom of her skin here. I'm not positive on that yet. This is the beginning of her arm that comes down this way. So there she is up close. You can see up here, you can see a little bit of sparkle. That's the blending filament instead of, instead of beads. But she's so pretty. I, I really like working on her. I actually stitched down here just in case I wanted to get a break from the skin so I could come down here and work on dress and then come up here and do skin and kind of work back and forth. But this last time that I pulled her out, um, I was completely fine just working on skin and didn't have any trouble doing that. Okay, so then I worked on my Temperature Library by Christy, Christy's Corner Needlework. And my progress, yay! I, before I had up to like this yellow book in April, so I finished out April and all of May. And now I have stitched every single color in my color chart because that's how warm we got by the end of May. It's been ridiculously warm. I'm sure, I'm sure where I live is not the only thing, the only place that is like that. Okay. So this color right here, that darkest red, that is the color I use for anything hotter than 96, I think. I have, um, where's my, here it is. Yep, anything higher than 95. So 96 and above gets this, that color right there. So I've only used it once so far, but I know that it's coming up in the next month, like in June, and obviously we're in July, and I definitely know we've hit that in July. So that's really fun, because I've used the coldest up here, and I've used the hottest here, so it's really, really fun to see that I've got the whole gamut going on. So pretty... I decided I am going to buy the pack. I just haven't done it yet. Um, it is charted to have all of these, like the rainbow, the clock, and the flower. It's charted to have all of these. And I think, I think, I am going to change at least some of them. Um, I, don't, I don't know which ones yet. What's kind of cool is that they do follow the kind of colors like these these have more of like the purples and blues these are going to have more like the yellows and orange colors and then we're back down here with like the cooler so it's not just it's not just the motif that that fits kind of that month like a clock for new year's day but it's also kind of follows the colors however um I might, I might still stitch those, but I kind of want to add something up here to the corners of the bookshelf. So, uh, 
I, I'm still quite indecisive about it. I need to just buy the pack and then take a look to see what it is that I want to do. But this is where I'm at. I also started the border down here for June. So we're making progress, y'all. It is coming along. And yes, I will. And also, I've got thoughts in my head trying to come out so I can, like, explain my plans to you guys, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> it needs to just wait. I'm currently stitching on Under the Sea. This was by Lakeside Needlecraft. Well, it's by Doreen Jones. But it was a stitch along that Lakeside Needlecraft did in 2017. It is my oldest whip. And... Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Come here. There we go. We're working on the turtle. And down here is the bottom of the piece. So the turtle is the main part of this piece. And then these orange, um, I guess, coral pieces, they will come down and meet with the sand. What else? I think there's a clam on the bottom in the sand and then you'll get some of this coming down here too but those swirlies y'all oh man so this is charted in like full x's there's no partial stitches um and when i first started this in 2017 i was just stitching along as charted and then it started bothering me that some of those X's were like going outside the back stitch or didn't totally fill up the back stitch or where two colors met, there was color bleed over from very different sections. So at some point I switched what I was doing and I'm not entirely sure how far in, I was quite a ways into it, it looks like, before I started doing that. And it might have not have been until here, but it might have been here, I don't know. Anyway, and then I switched. So this turtle, all of those swirls, <laughs> they're charted as full crosses, but I'm sitting here doing fractionals and making it more complicated because... I'm going to like the end result more. Plus, I started this in 2017, so clearly getting this done as soon as possible is not exactly a priority. It is now. I want it to be done, which is why this is a piece that is getting, theoretically, it's getting four days every other week. Um, that's what it's scheduled for, because I do want it done. But if I cared about it getting done, in the quickest way possible. It'd be done by now. It would have been done in 2017. That's my thinking anyway, which is why I'm sitting here doing fractionals. Um, yeah. And then the last piece. You know, I noticed something. Ever since I've, I've moved to this smaller rotation, um, I'm like moving through these videos very quickly. I don't know. That's not like a bad thing or anything. Oh, that fabric, it's an Ada. 18 count. 18 count Ada. Both of them were 18 count Ada. The bookshelf was 18 count oatmeal Ada. This one is a hand-dyed Ada, 
by Fabric Flair. There you go. Um, maybe that's why I'm going through it so fast, is because I'm forgetting to tell you stuff. But my last one, this is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, super size max color version, artwork by Amy Stewart, charted by Heaven Earth Designs. And, um, yeah, there were things I was going to say about this, so we'll see if I remember. I have put in 8,378 stitches, and it is now at 45.46%, like 45.5%, y'all. Okay, so here you go. <laughs> Look at this! I don't know where I was last time, but we've got my armor guy. He's all the way finished. And we've got this princess up here. She's finished. She actually reminds me of Sleeping Beauty. And now we're on this section, which I think goes here. I think. Could be a little bit wrong but i think that's how far over it is it's got we've got a firework this is a second firework and we've got a building i don't know if i should tell you what this building is or not it's a castle i'm just going to tell you this is a castle it makes sense because you've got a princess and a, sh and a knight here right so um it makes sense for this to be a a castle So, I won't probably be done this section before the next video because it is quite a long section. I, I've not even reached that, that corner yet. So, this, this piece, I started in 2019. There was a lot of 2020 that I didn't stitch. And even into 2021... There was a good portion there that I wasn't really stitching. So I did start in 2019, but it doesn't really feel like I have. Anyway, what my goal is, is to finish one shelf per year. So I'm done in um, 2024. So I finished this first shelf. That was floss tube number one, if you wanted to see that. Um, and I did that in October, November of last year. And I am on track to finish shelf two by October 31st this year. Uh, so if you, if you look, maybe you don't want to look at the artwork this closely. But there's kind of four sections left. I'm on this one with the fireworks. And then we've got, there's a big thing with three books. And then we've got another thing. And we've got then another thing. So I think I'm going to stitch the rest of this bookshelf in those like four sections. Because I do like stitching over like a bigger diagonal. Um... It just, it gives a little bit more variety than like some of those really, really skinny sections do. Like when I was just working on here, there's only so far your diagonal can be. And so it's kind of like once I was down here, I'm just like, well, it's just confetti. So when I've got a big section like this, I have a lot of variety between the sky and the firework and the castle. And, and then I'll move down and it'll just give a lot more variety. So I think it's going to do, that's what I'm going to do is one section, then two, and then three, and then the last one, four. And that will take me to the end of October. One other thing that I noticed or recalculated recently is I had... My goal for on this, my daily goal, I stitch on this daily, 
had been for several months at 600. So I would stitch until I reached 600. I'd finish out my thread and call it done. I recently recalculated and discovered that my I could drop my goal down to 500 and still meet my deadline. So I did that and that's been really helpful because it frees up a little bit more of my time, which I, as I talked about in the beginning of the video, I just, I really need right now. Um, so I'm happy that I'm, I'm back to doing 500 on this, which means um, slightly slower progress, but I'm still going to meet my goal. I do have a couple trips coming up between now and then. Um, two different weeks that I will be gone. So I'll have to see uh, if I need to recalculate because of those trips. If I do, I'm totally okay with it because I, I know I can do 600 in a day just fine. Just, but for right now, I'm really happy that I only have to do 500. And one more time. I'm so happy about this piece. I always am. I can't wait to open it all the way again. But I don't think that's going to happen until I reach the end of that shelf. So, um, plans. Because I keep trying to express something. So my rotation is basically all the pieces that you just saw. The only piece in my rotation that I haven't shown is um, Canopy Heart. I do have it right here. This one I stitched on the last day of the month. Uh, and that's You've now seen my entire rotation. Um, it's it's four days and then three days and four days and three days with my treasure hunt bookshelf daily and then bubble bubble on the 12th and canopy hearts on the last day. So that's seven projects plus my travel piece that's eight projects right? Um, if you remember, Treasure Hunt, not Treasure Hunt, Temperature Library is now in the slot that Frodo and Galadriel used to be. So this slot is the one, uh, each slot kind of has a, a theme that will tell me what piece to pick next. So, um, Sabrina is my fancy lady. So when I'm done with Sabrina, I will go back to Mayari, which I can't wait for. Um, Under the Sea is my oldest whip. So when I'm done with Under the Sea, I will move to my next oldest, prob well, oldest non-full coverage piece. Um, yes. Queen of the Night is my secondary focus on a finish full coverage piece. Um, it's not like my daily piece, which is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, but it's it's the one that I want to finish. It's it's that it's the next focus. I don't know how else to say that. Um, I'm sure there's a better way, so I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. And then there's Temperature Library. That slot is um, like meeting my yearly goal. So Frodo and Galadriel had a yearly goal on it to stitch on it for 10,000 stitches. Um, I chose 10,000 based on the Facebook groups, um, full coverage fanatics, 
Whips and Wonders challenge. And it has to be 10,000 in order to meet one whip because I tent, tent stitch in these. So once I met my goal on that, I put it away. It's not going to come out again this year. And I put in Temperature Library because that was one that I really wanted caught up and I want finished this year. Once I'm caught up on that piece, I'm going to maintain staying caught up. But the next piece, the piece that will replace it for that slot um, will be another full coverage that I haven't yet met my yearly goal on. There's two. One is actually that's I'm not telling the truth there. Technically I haven't met Bubble Bubble um, yet. So, and I don't know, well, Canopy Heart, I hadn't started, so I don't think I've attached a goal to that one. But the two that I'm not, that's not already within my rotation, that I haven't met my yearly goal on yet, is Father Christmas. This is a max color, but regular size. Um, and the other one is Neuschwanstein Castle. Um... Stein, Neuschwanstein, Castle. And both of those have a yearly goal of 10,000. So once I'm caught up on the temperature library, I'm going to put in one of these pieces to get to that 10,000 mark. I don't know if I'll be able to get to the 10,000 mark on all of these pieces, but I'm going to do my best. Um, I haven't really, I don't know. I don't know if I will, but I'm just going to keep working on it. And if I can't, that's going to help inform what I do next year. Um, but it might also just push me to, to see if I can, like, can I, can I do that? If I do manage to finish Temperature Library at the end of the year, I mean, I can't until the end of the year, right? Um, and I get these two pieces finished, their yearly goal, then I can put in something else um, like, well, Bubble Bubble maybe, um, to see if I can, if it needs help reaching its goal. I don't know if it does. We'll see. That's like months away, but that's kind of how I organize my rotation and how I choose what piece like goes in what slot. Um, it's like there are these different themes that like different, different category themes in my head and and for most of them, it's working on it until it's finished. Like Sabrina, I think I'm just going to work on it until it's finished. Um, Under the Sea, until it's finished. Queen of the Night, until it's finished. It's just that fourth category that is that can switch out and give me some of that extra variety, I guess. Um, it's, it's a much smaller goal than get it finished. So... There's a little bit of um, Suki's brain for you all. I don't know if Canopy Hearts, if I ended up putting a goal on that. If I did, because it's full cross, it only needs to be 5,000, but I don't think I'm going to. I think it's just for now going to be the last day of the month, and where it ends up at the end of the year is where it ends up at the end of the year, because that was a new start this year. The only thing left for me to show you today is this. This is for my Chatelaine, um, which is Autumn Water Garden Mandala. I want to do all the water gardens, and I also want to do all the knot gardens, and then I have some others that I want to do. So 
I'm not lacking for like shadowing desires. There, it's beautiful. Oh, you know, since I'm, it's here, let me show you how far I've gotten. I haven't shown them since May, so. It's all good, okay. I'm totally, no, I'm not. I was about to say I was gonna show it upside down, but I'm not going to. There it goes. This is the middle. And there are some, like right here, that's one over one bits. Mostly that's a two over two, but there are some already stitched one over one bits. And um, for my birthday, which was in February, I was gifted the thread pack. I was gifted the bead pack for Christmas. Um, that's in here somewhere. This. Look at those beads. So I was gifted that for Christmas, and then I was gifted the thread pack, which is just just arrived um, recently because you know the supply stuff with some of this floss. But I'm gonna show it to you. All right, this is okay. This is Thread Gatherer, uh, Rusty Amber, here is the uh, Thread Gatherer, ooh look at that, you can see that variation, Dark Forest, I know there's going to be a glare on the bags, but I don't want to take it out, um, okay. The Thread Gatherer is part of which company? Silk and Colors. Okay, The Thread Gatherer, Silk and Colors. I was like, what does SNC mean? That's what the code on the back says is SNC. So The Thread Gatherer, Silk and Colors is what these are. This is Copper Rose. I, the variegation is showing up so nicely right now. Uh, I'm reading that upside down. Golden Pines. I am so excited to work on my Chatelaine again, and I have no idea when that's going to happen. Um, Alpine Grasses. That one's really, really pretty. Medieval Mulberry. Ooh, look at that. I super, super love this one. Bet you can't figure out why. This is a Dinky Dyes Desert Sands. And then we've got Petite Treasure Braids. And these ones I need to pull out. So this is PBO2, there's two of those, and there's PB14, one, one two of those. Look how sparkly those are. Now that I've used uh, Krynik, I've not used Petite Treasure Braid yet, but I hear that it's way nicer to work with than Krynik, so I'm excited to give them a try and see what it's like to work with. The other colors, we've got PB22, which is so gorgeous. I wish they had like color names, but they don't. PB35, which is not quite that yellow. And PB56 which is a green. I'm excited. I'm so excited. To, now that I have these threads 
and I already know how gorgeous the chatelaine is. Like, I really like working on the chatelaine. Um, so I can't, I just, I can't wait. I just want to work on it. But this is how they come if you've never had a chatelaine, like, thread pack. Um, they put them in floss away bags and it came on a binder ring. So, yay! But yeah, I don't know. I don't know when I can work on, like, I have 33 projects started and I'm actively working on eight is that my math from earlier <laughs> I obviously can't keep math numbers in my head eight I think right so that leaves 25 projects that I have started but can't can't give attention to right now um, I'm choosing not to give attention to right now. And I'm mostly okay with that. It just makes me sad that I have all of these projects that I love and I can't wait to get to. And I have started. They're sitting there calling to me to just love on them. But I'm also super happy with my rotation right now. I love the progress that I'm seeing on these pieces. I love that I'm I'm getting to them regularly and and I'm having finishes. I mean granted the finishes that I've had my two finishes since I've started my floss tube channel uh, have been in the last like month, right? And it's been they're they're just the little ones, just the little ones. That was rude of me to say. But I'm seeing the progress. That's my point, is I'm seeing progress, I'm seeing these finishes, and and if I just continue to dabble in all my projects, then, like, part of enjoying the process of cross-stitching for me, like, I love the act of cross-stitching, but I also need to know that I'm making progress. I need to know that my effort is is producing, that I'm creating. Um, that, that these things that I'm working on will be done. Like that's, that's been this very vital part of, of, of healing for me is knowing that there's an end. Um, like anybody who's experienced things like anxiety or depression um, now I don't mean like a clinical, like a chronic depression. Like if that is you, my heart hurts for you. And I'm super sorry um, that that is something in your life. But for those of us who just experience episodes of these things, you know how when you're like in the middle of it, sometimes it feels like it's never going to end. Um, and, and when you're dealing with things that you have to heal from, like from years of living in a, uh, like living in survival mode, living in like trauma reactions, ruling your life, it can be hard to know that there is an end. Um, the, the sensations, the emotions, like you feel a lot of, like they, you feel a lot of anxiety, like that feeds it everything, right? Because it's been so long, it feels like there is no end. So a, a very vital part of my healing, um, my stitch therapy like i said i this really is my therapy it's it's teaching me that there isn't 
that there's an end. Um, and, and so I am loving my smaller rotation because I'm learning that because my, my, my brain and my body, my emotions, like all the different aspects of me are, are, are learning that there's a beginning, a middle and an end. And, and that I don't need to be stuck in the middle of it or even the beginning of it because there are some things that I, I, that don't feel like the beginning, like that don't feel like they're the middle. They feel like they're the beginning. Um, but knowing that there's an end allows me to work through the hardness of the middle so that there is an end to where these challenging things, these shadow events of my life become integrated into me. They become a part of my past and not something that rules my presence. And, and that's something that maybe sounds like I've learned because I'm able to verbalize it now. Um, but I'm still learning it. <laughs> I'm very much still learning it. I think a lot of why I have the language to explain this is because of The Body Keeps the Score, the book that I talked about, I think, two videos back. Um, I think I just did this, but I meant this. Two videos back. Floss tube 13, I should say, because I did have floss tube extra videos thrown in there. Um, I've, some of the more recent chapters that I've read have helped me to understand, um, that, like, to have the language to explain what I've been experiencing, um, what I've kind of been discovering for myself in, in utilizing stitching as these therapy sessions is, is that I am, I'm processing, I'm processing things. I am, I, I'm learning these very important things for, for all parts of me to like get on the same page about. Um, and it feels good. It feels good. So I'm going to keep going on that. And yeah. Okay. That's all I've got. I I think, I think that's all I've got. So um, if you have questions or comments, obviously, um, if you have questions, I do try to answer all of them in the comment section um, or message me. Several of you do. So um, you can always message me over on Instagram, the brown eyed stitcher. And... That's it. That's it. If it is also summer for you where you are, I hope that you're not dying of heat stroke because <laughs> it's been super hot for so many of us. And yeah, I love being warm, but like heat stroke's a real thing. Heat exhaustion, it's a real thing. Let's not do that, y'all. Hope you're having a great time and that you know that you're welcome here and that my love goes out to you. Bye, friends.